Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the rules of diplopia the rules of double vision cranial nerves part 31 ocular motor nerves part 17 so what are all the rules of double vision what are all the important rules of the double vision or diplopia there are three important rules of diplopia there are three important rules of diplopia the first the separation of image is greatest in the direction of the action of the weak muscle the separation of image is greatest in the direction of the action of the weak muscle. For example, lateral rectus. What is the action of lateral rectus? Abduction. When you look towards the lateral side. So, when you look towards the lateral side and if the lateral rectus is involved because of the sixth nerve palsy, the separation of image is greatest in the direction of the action of the lateral rectus that means when you look far laterally so this is the first rule the separation of images is greatest in the direction of action of the weak muscle if the lateral rectus is involved the separation of image is greatest in the lateral direction the second important rule is the false image is the more peripheral image the false image is the more peripheral image. The true image is because of the of the rays passing falling exactly on the macula. The false image is because of the rays falling on the perimacular area and therefore they are not very sharp. It is blurred or false and the false image is more peripheral the more it is away from the macula the more peripheral the false image goes so this is the second rule the third rule is that the false image always comes from the paratic eye because the true image is very sharp clear and it falls on the macula therefore it is very sharp clear and real whereas the false image it is false it is fainter it is not sharp it is hazy because it does not fall on the macula it falls on the perimacular area which does not give rise to a, a distinct sharp image so the false image is always from the paratic eye so these are all the important three rules of diplopia one the separation of images is greatest in the direction of action of the weak muscle second the false image is the more peripheral and third the false image comes from the paratic eye now example we will try to evaluate the right lateral rectus uh, palsy left medial rectus palsy and right superior oblique weakness evaluation of the ocular misalignment double vision so if the right lateral rectus is involved person cannot move the eye laterally so what happens the red lens diplopia, diplopia fields drawn as seen by the examiner the red lens that is the dark circle is placed over the right eye and the eye moves to the six cardinal positions of gaze with the patient looking at an examining light so the red lens that is the darker circle circle in the image is placed over the right eye and the eyes moves to the six cardinal positions of gaze that is the letter h with the patient looking at an examining light white circle depicts image from the left eye white light dark circle images comes from the right eye red light and intermediate circle images from both eyes that is the pink light so red lens is placed on the right eye and there is a light in front of the patient now when the person moves the right eye for example in the first diagram when there is right lateral rectus when the person is trying to move the right eye the lateral rectus does not move 
and therefore the image coming from the lateral rectus right eye that is the red colored one in the image it is dark circle goes more and more peripherally remember the first law the images are separated greatest in the direction of the weak muscle so it goes laterally so if you can see in the first diagram the dark circles coming from the right lateral rectus are going extremely towards the lateral side so this indicates that person has got right lateral rectus weakness now let's repeat the same experiment now with the left medial rectus weakness again the red lens is placed on the right eye and a light is placed in front of the patient the examiner again moves the eyes laterally but this time the medial rectus is affected so medial rectus is affected which is denoted by the white not darkened cycles white plane circles so now since the medial rectus is weak they go more peripherally the images are greatest in the direction of the weak muscle so when the medial rectus gets affected it goes more and more peripherally so now if you see in the second diagram the red lens placed on the right eye it is normal whereas the circles the plane circles which depicts the medial rectus they go more and more peripherally so this indicates patient has got medial rectus weakness now we if we repeat the experiment again if there is a right superior oblique weakness superior oblique you remember its action it, its action is just opposite the name so superior oblique means it moves inferiorly and obliques usually act more medially and then inferiorly and therefore the images are seen inferiorly and more peripherally so in right superior oblique weakness you can see that the red circle the darkened circles are moved inferiorly and peripherally this indicates right superior oblique weakness so using these three laws of diplopia we can find out whether the lateral rectus is involved whether the medial rectus is involved or whether the superior oblique is involved and again diplopia may be divided into crossed heteronymous or uncrossed homonymous if the false image is on the same side as the eye that sees it there is homonymous diplopia if the image is on the opposite side there is heteronymous diplopia for the patient with maximal separation of images on the right horizontal gaze the uncrossed diplopia would imply right lateral rectus weakness and crossed diplopia indicates left medial rectus weakness so you can see here if the right lateral rectus if you see it is uncrossed it is on the same side as of the right lateral rectus it is uncrossed diplopia whereas if you see the left medial rectus the plane circles have gone beyond the darkened circles so this is crossed diplopia so uncrossed diplopia means the the images the false image is on the same side as that of the eye whereas crossed diplopia means the image is on the opposite side of the weakened eye crossed diplopia so that's what so for the patient with maximal separation of images on the right horizontal gaze the uncrossed diplopia would imply right lateral rectus weakness whereas crossed diplopia would indicate the left medial rectus weakness so these are all the fascinating concepts of the rules of diplopia uh, by which we can when we understand this diplopia we can clinically find out which muscle is affected and these are the concepts of crossed and uncrossed diplopia i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture on uh, the rules of diplopia the other important concepts of neurology i have put it in a question and answer format in the book focus neurology uh, written by me in a question and answer format this is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon so if interested it could be bought online if you have liked this video please like and share the link to your friends but please subscribe my youtube channel dr sinvas medical concepts and my bp page dr sinvas concepts thank you bye